Hello everyone, I think we're live. And it looks like we've already got a super chat in for the boys. They didn't, weren't even, ex oh, nope, one of them heard it. Wade's head popped up. So we're gonna start the night off well. You know, for not being my brightest dog, he sure learns about treats fast. You want a super chat, Gibson? Gibson, you want a super chat? Thank you, uh, this one came from Heather Bryant, thank you so much. The boys, thank you. They have been bugging me all <coughs> all day. As soon as I start getting ready for the super chat and setting up the background, they or not the super chat, the live streams, they know. And they start in with um, harassing me heavily all day, laying in their bed, trying to get my attention. Like they just want the live stream to start. It's actually really funny, but it's also like you trip, tripping over a greyhound is dangerous. You get your super chat? Okay, very nice. That was pretty gentle. We've been working with him on that. Bad cow is, he nailed me good yesterday, got my nail bed. He chomps his treats too much. Thank you so much. Um, let me get everything. Okay, you, you got, boys need to go lay down now. You got, that's it, lay down, lay down. Say thank you to Heather and lay down. Lay down. Good boys. All the way, there you go. <coughs> Very nice, okay, whoops, wrong camera. So tonight we are going to be working in oil pastels. I'm working with the, let's see if I can say this right. I, a friend of mine who is French, uh, Sakum's here on, I'm probably butchering her name too, so I'm gonna butcher all the words, here on YouTube, some of you guys may know her. She wrote out for me, because she is French, how to say this. It's Sanilia, 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 by how she has it written, Sanilia. I'm never gonna remember that. I've sat here for like the last five minutes before we started trying to pronounce it. But anyway, those are the oil pastels I'm working in. Now, I have only used before this set, <coughs> before this set, I've only used the student grade oil pastels and there was definitely a difference. Now that's not to say I never enjoyed the, the student grade oil pastels, I actually did. I mean, they were all I had known, but they're a harder medium to work in, like um, more firm, I guess, that not, not difficult level hard, the other type of hard much more firm. These are really soft. The other thing, somebody had asked me about, um, I don't like the feel of pa um, soft pastels at all. I can't work with them. They freak me out. Like it's a weird, like the, the dryness, really the chalky feel, cannot handle it. That's not how these are at all. These are very, very, um, very smooth, very kind of buttery. So actually that is a very good way to describe the, the texture of these. So very different than working with the student grade. And again, if, if you've got the student grade, go with those too. That's, they're still fun. They're just a harder m medium to work in. So that was a big difference that I noticed between the two. And I am, we've got every, audio's good, everything's good. I didn't even check. It looks like we're good. Yeah, okay, we, we are good. Um, the paper that I'm gonna be working on, this is the oil pastel pad by Sanilia. Sanilia, I'm never gonna get that right. Um, this is their pad and it's actually really nice. I'd never used this before either. Really any of the smoother mixed media papers, as long as it's a cardstock and thicker, I've always liked those with the oil pastels. This is definitely a heavy weight. This one is, what did it say? Um, 160 pounds, so it is a thicker paper, but more of your cardstock type. And the thing that I really liked, it's got, it looks like glassine. They listed it as just a crystal insert, but it, it's like glassine in between each page. Super nice, definitely I will be buying this again. And after having worked on it, I did really enjoy it. So um, I had to cut it down into the size that I wanted for the other project that I did. So really, really nice paper. And I do have all of the supplies that I'm using, <coughs> excuse me, the supplies I'm using are listed in the video description. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about, I had never used a fixative on my oil pastels before. One of the complaints that I'd had is it seemed like the oil pastels I used in the past would take months to sort of set, but they never dry all the way. They're just always kinda, I don't know, gooey is maybe not the right word. They're just always soft. They didn't um, really set all the way. So if you were to run your hand across it, it would smudge. I did a piece, if I can grab it. I did this piece this week. So um, it's more teal than what it shows on camera. But I did this piece and look, nothing, no smudging because I used the fixative, the, and it's still the Sennelier. I sound like an idiot every time I say that, but um, I used this fixative on it. Oh my gosh, it gave it kind of a slight sheen. 
yeah, you can see it there. A little bit of a gloss there, but it, it hardened it right away. Like it, it's just amazing to me that I can touch this and I'm not messing anything up. That has not been my experience with oil pastels in the past. The only way, cause I was testing how much I could mess it up was to take my fingernail and scrape it. I could kind of scrape a little off, but as far as like lightly touching it, nothing was coming off. So, and that was always one of my biggest complaints with oil pastels. Problem solved. Turned out I just needed to use the proper tools. Funny how that works, isn't it? So this lesson, by the way, will be up on Patreon for members tonight. I've It's already edited, I just have to upload it. So that one will be available. Okay, so those are the materials that I'm going to be using tonight along with odorless mineral spirits for blending. And let's see. Um, we are going to start by just sketching this out. We're gonna go, I'm gonna grab the the peach color. See, even when I touch this, like it already comes off. It's so soft, it comes off on my finger really easily. And with the student grade ones, I don't know what brand I had used in the past, but it's been years since I really used these much. But the one that I used in the past, you could touch it and it wasn't really coming off. These are very, very buttery. Um, do you only use the fixative as a final layer? I think so, but I'm not positive, honestly. It doesn't really say a lot. Let's see, it says, made from a vinyl resin, resin and alcohol base. By the way, don't spray this inside. It does have a strong smell. Um, I used it outside. This totally transparent fixative leaves a clear and glossy film to protect oil pa pastels against dust and smearing. For best results, apply in several light, light coats rather than one heavy application. Turn camera upside down after use and press button for a few seconds until gas escapes. Yeah, that is all... And then all the warnings, you know, don't, don't huff this. But it, yeah, it's not, I don't really have much more information besides that. Although on mine, I did go over mine because <coughs> I was messing with it so much, like seeing if I could get areas to lift. So I went over it just to see if it would stick with white and it did stick. I don't know if that's archival though. I don't think it reads to me like this is supposed to be a final fixative. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Um, you can bid on this. This is available over my website, lacree.com. If you want the final drawing that I'm gonna do tonight, this is going to be an eight by 10. If you want it matted, completely up to you, but it's a $15 charge to cover my fees for the extra in shipping and the mat itself. And just like to throw this out there because the last two times somebody had contacted me and I think it's a problem with my stuff going to spam when I email people back because uh, I've had a few bounce back to me, but I've had people contact me and say they wanted the mat, but they never paid for it. No, it, that's not like, th that sounds like I'm throwing them under the bus. I'm not trying to do that. It's a problem with my website. Let me reword that in a less judgy way. If you want the mat, just check out. There's a button on the website that says pay for the mat there. If you message me separately, for some reason, the communication like cuts off and people are just not getting the message. So um, that sounded so much more like judgy when it's really the fault, I think, of my email and website. So there we go. But if you do bid on this and you do decide you want the mat, it's going to be a black mat. I've got a sample over here. Dalton Soul, are you here tonight? If you are, let me know. I need to show you the white versus the black mat still. I actually found the black mat today. So um, anyway. This is the mat that will be going um, over this. This one's a double mat. The other one I don't think is a double. I could be wrong on that, I don't remember. But um, this one's kind of damaged, so you, you guys get the newer ones. So just let me know if you want it. You can mat it on your own. You can go to like Michael's or Hobby Lobby, wherever. They've got mats, they're usually like $6-ish. They're not expensive. So if you don't mind matting it on your own, you'll save money that way. Anyway, there you go. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. And I'm gonna just start by sketching everything out where I want it. Um, I've got two photos up here. I'm not sure why. Let's just pick one. That was making things more difficult than it needed to be. So I'm going to pull up, just lightly sketch in about where I want my clouds. You can tell I'm a little obsessed right now. Is that working? Yeah. Let me know too um, if, okay, Dolphin Soul's here. I'll show you that in just a second. Let me know if this freezes up, if the cameras do, because that has been a problem so far tonight. Really quick, I'm going to stop and show Dolphin Soul the two mats because she wanted to choose, she wasn't sure if she wanted the white or the black. So before I forget, so here is what hers looks like with the white. That's the Dolphin Ink Tense from last week. And then here is with the black. Black, white. 
Personally, I like the white better, but I think it depends on what your home decor is, what you think will look best. So there you go. Just message me later. Let me know. Here we go. Okay. So we've got my clouds sketched out. None of this is, this is just all kind of a base layer. So none of that really is super important. And then to get the circle, <laughs> it's a hard choice. Yeah. To get the circle, I'm just going to take the cap off my fixative, put that where I want it. This is going to be my moon. Yeah, I can just sketch it out with this. That's fine. Now I chose something that was going to be a little bit bigger or smaller than what I want the actual shape of the moon to be because when I circle that, these pastels are so thick, it goes like the actual circle was in here. You can see my circle is way out there on this. Um, let me see. We've got... Okay, that was that. So there's my general drawing. I've got my moon, I've got my clouds, and now I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my background first. I'm going to choose a dark, you can see all the colors I have here. This is a huge set. You do not need this big of a set. They mix and blend very well. So if you're thinking about getting these, you can get the smaller set to get a feel for them and see if you like them. I would say probably pick up an extra white. That one I can tell is one I'm gonna go through extra fast. And I need a dark navy blue. Let's see what color I want here. That looks pretty good. What color is this? Indigo, indigo light. Do we have an indigo dark? Probably right next to it. This one is something charcoal blue. I don't know, the label is covered partially. Let's see which one I like. Probably that one and maybe switch. Oh, they're very similar. Eh, let's go with the whatever charcoal blue. Now you can see these little angles right here I have. That is just to let me know that that is where my mat fits. So I need to make sure I'm going wider than that. So I don't have to go all the way to the black tape, but I need to go outside of those two angles to make sure that it covers. I probably will go all the way to the tape anyway. But these I found that you go through fairly quick. I mean, you can see I've already burned through a decent amount just in that amount of time. They're really soft. You do not need to push hard to get decent coverage. And I'm gonna be blending with OMS, but you can blend, they have a colorless blender you can go with. You can blend just with Q-tips or a paper towel. There's so, you can use your finger to blend. There are so many different ways. I don't like using my hands that much because some, and I haven't researched theirs, but I know some ha still use different pigments that are not super non-toxic. So I try to keep my hands off. Plus, as we all know, people juice is not archival. So I like to keep the oils of my hands off as much as possible. In this case, I don't think some, some of your hands touch, like any, if you did have some of the oils from your skin getting on it, there's enough coverage here. You're not really gonna have too big of an issue, but ideally I still like to keep my hands off it as much as I can. Plus I like my hands to stay clean because I'm a little bit neurotic. Now notice I'm not layering this to where, like anywhere I want the pink clouds, I'm not pulling the blue away into that because the pink, you're not gonna get it back to pink very easily if you're trying to go over a dark blue. So you can layer, but it does, the color is affected by what's underneath because it's not really dry. I mean, think wet into wet blending with or painting with oil paint. What's under is still wet as you're working. And this isn't something where, oh, just let it dry overnight and then you can do your next layer. I've not really found that to be the case. I'm gonna take the other blue too and see how much you can really see. Actually, I'll compare the two so you can see how much, just in that, how much I'm using it. So I don't, especially with the more, <laughs> the, not, the higher end, pastels or oil pastels. I don't think it's a super inexpensive medium. Luckily, there's a ton of colors in there. So you can see I'm just layering so I get some variation in the sky there. And you can get these open stock. I bought mine from Blick and they have uh, Blick.com and they have all the different colors you can buy individually. I actually went back and bought a few white when I realized how fast I was going through this.
Now, much like colored pencil, I wanna make sure I have a decent amount of pigment on the paper so that when I go through and start blending with OMS, it has something to work with. And you can really see how grainy and gritty this is. That will affect that end result too, like because I'm not pushing down hard. Now you can, one of the methods you can do with these is just to push really hard and just grind that pigment into the paper. Mine will be a little bit blotchier in them because I'm not going to do that because I'm not burning through my pastels that fast and I don't think, I don't dislike the look of where it's kind of blotchy. I think it's just one of those looks with pastels that I like or oil pastels. So I'm using a lighter hand as I put this in down. So for blending this, I am taking an old, it's very frayed, I think you can see there how frayed that is. And I'm gonna go over that with OMS. Nancy, thank you so much. I'm gonna come back and get that after I blend this out so we can give this a chance to dry while the boys get there. I'm not saying the word, because they will pop up. They're gonna be very excited. Notice I'm trying to keep a very calm voice because I don't want them to know yet. As soon as I get excited, they lose it. Okay, so I'm taking some OMS and I'm just gonna go right around there. And you can use a decent amount of OMS to blend this. I'm pretty proud of myself for keeping my voice calm so that the boys didn't know. And I don't mind if this smudges some into the moon, but if I filled it all the way in with the blue now, before I put the white in, the blue is going to be very hard to cover with the white, like to get it light enough. I probably could use a larger brush for this, but whatever. You can see I'm really grinding that in there, really spreading that around. And anywhere where I push a little bit harder, where the pigment, like you can see the pigment, like the dark spots in here, any of those, there's the easel or the thing, any of those spots are, oh, that is really sketchy, um, are darker. Like they're not as solid in there. It's catching the tooth of the paper and it's, it's almost like stickier. And I will do two layers on the sky, letting it dry in between. So I'll do this layer, we'll get caught up on the, the puppy chats, and then we'll um, do the pink layer, blend that out, and then I'll do, while the pink dries, I will do another layer here. And that'll give me the coverage that I want. Yeah, a few of these areas I can see, I really didn't go as dark as I probably could have like here. And so by doing the second layer, that allows me to smooth it out where I didn't have it quite what I wanted. This is super messy, but no worries. I definitely could have put a lot more pigment on there before blending this time out through. And very much like colored pencil, the further you get in, the more layers you have, the less and less OMS you wanna use because it starts to smudge too much. But on these base layers, you can use a whole lot. Now see the messiness? This area here is much smoother than up here. I just didn't have enough pigment up here. It's as simple as that. If I, I, and it looked like to me like I did, but obviously I did not. It doesn't ruin anything. It's no big deal. It's just going to take another layer, which I was already planning on doing anyway, but I need to really make sure I get that in there heavier, which makes sense because I decided to tint some of the blue down here with that second coat. So that make, that is why this one is so much darker. Okay, so we're going to put that on there. Um, Baby Panda's asked how many much OMS I put on my brush. A decent amount. There is a lot for the first layers. As I build up layers, though, I'm going to use less and less. So let's see. Um, we've got two. We've got Nancy and Linda. We've got two super chats, boys. 
Guggen Gibson, what, did you say the word? You guys want a super chat? I guess that's a yes. <coughs> you get su two super chats right now. You gotta back up. No, you're being pushy, back up. Back your cow face up. Say thank you, Nancy. So this one's from Nancy. See, you're bit me that time. Bad cow. Okay, don't drool over my drink. That's actually kind of gross, Gibson. Okay, and this one is from Linda. Second super chat. There you go. That was, well, you didn't bite me, but you're still a little rough, bad cow. Good boy, say thank you. Okay, go lay down. Down, down, down. Keep ignoring me. Oh, crap. You know what? Thank you. Yeah, you guys missed the super chat, so you guys get another one. Okay, Gibson, come. This is, this is my fault. I didn't get to show them your super chat treat, so you get extra. Because apparently, I don't know how to switch cameras. Easy, no, easy. Much nicer. Good practice for Wade who needs it anyway, because he keeps biting me. Easy. Much nicer. Good boys. Well, Gibson's always gentle. Say thank you. Okay, go lay down. Lay down. Down. Wade, you know the rules. Don't give me sad puppy cow eyes. Okay. Mm, Charlotte said that um, she's noticed certain colors blend better with OMS than others. That's interesting. Yeah, I haven't used these. I mean, I've only used a few colors. So I, my biggest thing I'm noticing is just how thick I put that down. It seems to make a big difference. Okay. Let's see, and I'm still waiting for that to dry, so. Barb said, oil pastels never fully dry without fixative. Is that correct? That's been my experience. Now, maybe some pastels do. Let, you guys can let me know. I have not worked with them in years, and what I did use was a student grade, and those never, I don't think those ever dried. Like, I could always rub my hand across it, and the color would have come off. So, yeah. Um, so, these, I would always personally frame oil pastels behind glass even with the fixative because while this does allow me to put my hand across it and it's not smudging I still that is still a vulnerable medium I would still put it always put it behind glass it's fixative and glass would be ideal okay so let's go ahead and get a base of the pink and this color that I'm using here is coral oh that's actually the color I was calling it in the patreon video that's unusual I never get the color right I suspect this is going to be a color I need to buy backups of or extra of. I think it's, it's just a nice color that I would use for a lot of things. I'm just working that lightly in circles there. Now, I don't mind if some of that blue, you can see I'm overlapping it, it will start picking up blue on the pastel. That's fine. See how it's smudged in here. I would need to be pulling other colors in here regardless, so it's no big deal. But let's say I don't want that to smudge, just wipe it off on the paper towel. You just clean it off in between colors when you've blended two together. Let me know how many of you guys use oil pastels and what brands do you use? I almost feel like when I use oil painting with a palette knife because you go through it so quick, these lay down fast. And I think that's part of it too. They lay down very fast. So let's say I was working in colored pencil. I would have to do enough layers that I would still use this much product. It just feels like I'm going through it so fast because I'm working big and that color is not coming out accurate at all. I'm gonna adjust the camera in just a moment here. Let's see if I can get that to look better. But because I'm layering it down or laying it down so fast, it feels like I almost like I'm, I don't want to say wasting because you're never really wasting your supplies, but it does feel like you're burning through it very quickly, but I'm covering so much so quickly, I think is, is more of the thing there. Let me see if I can fix this. It's really, the color is super off. Mm, not great. We're back 
back to keep it flickering there fix that this is I'll have to pull it over here maybe it's the spectrum or the brightness that's closer closer again not perfect but kind of let me show you by pulling this over here this usually has better yeah you can see there's where my color is at right now so it's pretty dark in there this looks like a kid's drawing right now I promise we're going somewhere with this okay now I'm going to go ahead and start pulling in some darker colors so I've got let's use a magenta I think you're a little too red let's see Ooh, I like this purple what are you violet something yeah that may work and this color here definitely it, I used this on the other pink one too pale pink Madden Lake think something like that okay so let's start laying that in there I just want to get some variation now be careful don't just do this don't we're not just scribbling I want to get these clumps and start building the shapes of these clouds if you just scribble back and forth that doesn't give you the shape that you're you're trying to achieve here and right now this is going to look very ugly in your beginning stages don't let that frustrate you. I'm going to let this go over the blue a little too. Don't let that discourage you or frustrate you. It's going to be so, once you start adding your white highlights, which I do last on the, on this type with the clouds, it looks so good. It is the most satisfying thing. And see how I'm just starting to build up those shapes again, not sketching, not, not scribbles. And whatever I put down is going to mix in a bit with whatever is under it. So you want to keep that in mind when you're choosing your colors. So I'm putting it over a lighter color so this is not going to be as dark as it is straight out of the stick. And then I'll wait to pull this over the blues more until I get the blues finished up. And let's get some of these darker purples in there. Oh, that is a pretty, it's really bright, but that is a pretty color. I'll have to mix that in with a gray though to tone it down or some of the blue probably. I don't want it. It's pretty, but it's probably a little too purple. Okay, we're gonna pull this color. This one is Violet Ochre just a really pretty this is another color I think I'm going to go through quite a bit I'm going to want to order more because it's just that really pretty grayish um, grayish like purple color now I'm getting this on so thick in some of these places those are the areas that are going to blend really smooth so if you want it more smooth put more color I mean if I don't know if you can really see but if we go in here you can see all these dots those dots, even with the OMS blending in, you're going to really see that. So that, that will um, show up quite a bit. So I'm going to get some more pigment in there. We've got another, oh wait, I shouldn't say it too loud. We've got another super chat from Corey. It didn't work. <laughs> Wow, so you're a sight hound. You're supposed to have good eyes. Your ears aren't supposed to be that good. <laughs> Thank you, Corey, uh, Corey, for the super chat. I guess we're just going to do that now because I'm not sneaky enough for, you know, I say you're not a very smart cow, but when there's treats involved, I tried. I was going to wait for it until after I was waiting for this to dry, but thank you so much, Corey, for the super chat. You guys want, you got back up. Ready? Okay, go boys. Thank you for the slobber. Oh my God, Gibson. See, this is why I can't have carpet. I have to have tile because dog drool. 
way easier to mop than on carpet. Good boy, go lay down. It's all gone, go lay down. Down, down. Keep going. All the way. Uh, 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 both of you go lay down. You're getting, you're pushing your luck now. Look at that bad cow. They're like, fine. Boring. It gives his big sigh <laughs> if I have to. <laughs> Thank you so much, Corey. I don't know. At this rate, I think I'm going to have to take them to the pet store to pick out more toys. So I'm going to go back over this with more pink to make this a bit more solid than what I've got. And see, I'm being messy. I don't care if I smudge over the purple, over the rose color. Just want to get that color in there. And this is going to be such a great medium. I really can't wait to do portraits with it. This will be so much fun to work with that way. Now, this has a ton of blue on it because of blending this. So I'm going to use my OMS and just rub that in circles until that comes off clean. OMS is a brush cleaner, so you don't have to use anything else to clean your brush. You're just gonna rub that on your paper towel with the OMS. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go through and smooth this out and see how much smoother that is. I put so much more pigment on it this time. Now I'm smudging in between the blue and the pink, which means I'm pulling blue up. So I'm gonna rinse that brush, wipe it on my paper towel. Clean that up a bit. And I'm just moving that brush in circles. And this brush, it's a synthetic hog hair uh, filbert, but it's really frayed. It's damaged from painting. You can see how it's all messed up. It's perfect for this. It's a very rough surface. Now, another thing you can do is to take your paper towel. You can dip that in a bit of OMS. So there's a little on there and you can blend that way as well. And they're very similar, the end result between the two. The brush is just a little, I found it to be a little easier just because I didn't have to touch the paper towel. The color is much more accurate now, so that's working well. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them now. I will be going over and answering them at the end of the video. Okay, we're gonna leave that to dry. Now, one thing I did find, with colored pencil, you do not wanna work over an area that is wet from, like if it, you had blended with OMS, you don't wanna put the pencil on top, it damages the tooth of the paper. Didn't really find that to be too big of an issue with this um, because it's so soft. You're not, I didn't find that I was hurting the paper at all by going over it with color. Some of the colors stick better than others, but that's still wet and I can add more right now. So it doesn't seem to follow that same, don't work over the paper while it's wet, wet rule. Okay, so we're gonna leave that to dry. And I'm going to now come back and work on this. We can get the moon in too. I can blend that all together. So let's take white and I'm just gonna put a layer of the white with the moon. And when I go over it with the blue, that'll give me that nice light blue color and then I'll go over it with the white again. So a little bit of a layering process there. But this'll keep me from going too dark. And then I'm gonna have clouds. We'll have to poof up over that some. Okay, so let's go ahead and get some more color down. And so again, this is another area. The paper's mostly dry. It may not be dry all the way. It's fine. As long as I'm close, you know, it's going over it just fine. It's actually sticking weird with this color, so maybe it is still really wet right there. So one of the things I did when I was playing with this before I was using my hair dryer to dry the OMS. OMS is flammable. So normally I would say don't ever do that. But in this case, because the um, my hair dryer is really weak, 
I know that the flash point is, I want to say it's about 120 degrees. It's 120 or 140. I think I'm, we'll, we'll, I go with 120 to be safe. My hair dryer is not getting close to that because it's not that good. So I could kind of safely do it, but I don't like to do it in video because I have no idea what your hair dryer heats up to. And I had one that used to heat up high enough. I'm pretty sure it would have started a fire. So those are just things you want to keep in mind. I am not saying the word, Linda. I'm gonna be I'm I'm gonna be sneaky so that I can get this in and blend it because I learned the last time that bad cow apparently reads my mind and whispering didn't work. See, I'm trying to not use my super excited voice because that seems to be bad cow's first clue that things are coming. I can't even say the words. So let me put a little bit more with the dark. And I'm gonna pull a little bit of black into this as well to darken it up. So this is with the indigo. Just wanna get good color in there. It is really difficult for me not to use my excited voice when I see, I can't even say the words because the boys know what the word is now. I'm pretty sure Gibson has a better vocabulary than I do. See, I'm really getting pigment in there this time. And let's grab a black. Is this one black? Yeah, I'm just gonna go around the edges a little bit. Okay, let's blend that. And then the boy, I can't, I don't want to even say boys. Did they pop? Nope, they're being, okay. They didn't, they didn't pick up on that. So I'm going to clean the OMS off the brush or the pink off the brush again. We'll go ahead and start blending this out. Now this time I'm going to let this blend in with my, my moon so that it'll stain the color. I'm just going to pull that right in. And if it's blotchy, great. That gives me detail of the moon. I do not need it to be perfectly smooth. Let that one be rough. But I do need to wipe the white off now, or that is going to blend too much in with the color here. Actually, I could probably pull a little bit of white there and get a cool look. I'll let that white smudge out. I decided I wanted a little bit of glow for the moon there. See, and now the moon is dark enough. I won't have to bring any darker areas in at all. And that's flashing. There we go. Now at this point, I've got too much oil mess on the brush. See how I'm getting streaky? Then I'm going to be better off. I'll just smooth some of that out with let me grab a clean paper towel and I'm using a Viva paper towel that is really important when you're working with OMS because the OMS does not play nicely with like your bounty or regular kitchen paper towels although I guess Viva are regular for some people uh, but they, these are much more cloth-like. So now where I had strokes I didn't want, I can go ahead and smooth that out. Okay. Let's get down in here, just soften the transition between the pink and the blue. That works. Okay, boys, you want your super chat? Look at Wade, really? Linda gave you a super chat. Look at who remembered to change the camera angle that time. Do you want a super chat from Linda? See, thank you. I think everyone's trying to earn you another trip to the toy store, the puppy toy store. Good boys. See, good boys. <laughs> Is that very good? It's your favorite treat, huh? Okay, go lay down, lay down. They only get these treats on live stream nights and they know they love them. Go lay down. These are the 
What are they? True Chews. These ones are duck, I think. Yeah. They love them. Go lay down, boys. Down. Lay down. Good boys. Very good follow direction practice. Okay, so the blue needs to dry. We can work on the pink clouds. I, you know, it's funny too, since we started doing this for the super chats with them, how much more alert they are during the stream. <laughs> Normally they're just, they were just passed out the whole time. Okay, so I'm gonna start getting some of these more dark areas in. This really needs to dry. I may break my own roll and use the hair dryer, but I just want to stress to you guys, my hair dryer is so weak. It probably gets to a max of 90 degrees and I don't hold it on one area. I'm mostly blowing air. So OMS is flammable. That is just, I can't stress that enough. And I, like I said, I had a hair dryer before that was so hot. I have no doubt it would have started a fire. The flash point of, I'm trying to think, Mona Lisa, one of them was one, I think Mona Lisa was either 120 or 140, and then Gamsol was either 140 or 160. It was like 20 above. So that is just, <coughs> you need to be aware of that if you're going to use it. But mainly I use it to, just to blow air to fat, speed it up. This is taking a long time because you put so much OMS on it and that paper does absorb it really well. Okay, so back with the pigment. Yeah, this paper is wet, so it's extra slippery. Let's see how well the white shows up. Oh, good enough, okay. See, and this is where I found it to be just so enjoyable. The white shows up so nicely. It is so great. Oh, uh, okay, weird chat disconnected. It is so great for getting those highlights with the cloud. Okay, but I do need to pull pink up over a lot of this. We need that in the background. And I'm gonna blend that with a Q-tip, just to soften that out. And I found with oil pastels, get creative with different things you have around your house. An old t-shirt, an old rag, Q-tips. Um, you can scrape bits off for highlights. So let's say I wanna scrape details. See how I can scrape little details for the moon by just using, this is a, what is this, an etching? Where did I, it was something I got in one of my smart art boxes. Engraving tools, it works. Um, you've got a lot of different things that you can do. Now, depending on what you blended, that came back up white because I had white down first. Here, these, not gonna come back up to white because pink was down first, so it doesn't really lighten that much when I scrape here. The only reason that showed much was because white was down first. So if you're gonna do the techniques where you're scraping away details, you just wanna make sure you're planning ahead for what color you want scraping up. So like here, that white, if I scraped, I can expose the pink because the pink is underneath. It's the white that I'm scraping up because it's the top layer. Yeah, silicone nail tools for blending. Yeah, there are just so many great tips um, from Clark Fine Art. There are so, so, so many different ways it, you can play with these. I almost think of it too, uh, more as sculpting in many ways because it goes on thicker and you're just kind of manipulating and moving it around. It's very different than a lot of other mediums that I work in. I'm gonna start pulling this rose color. Is it actually rose? Madden Lake, pink, pale pink, Madden Lake. That is a really long name. Let's start pulling some of this up here. I wanna make sure that's going in front of the moon. And I want to overlap that over the blues as well so it kind of fades out. And see, once you get those base layers, the rest of this goes really fast. This down here again gets covered by the mat, so I'm not worried about going, filling that in too solid. And I'm using my reference as just a general guideline. I do not need that to be exact at all. Now here, see how I'm getting a little bit too scribbly. Fill that in a little bit more, um, more like you're 
paying attention to what you're doing, which I apparently was not. More deliberately, that's the word I'm looking for, <laughs> deliberate. And you've got these clumps and clusters in the clouds, and that's what I'm doing. more solid to darken this up. Now here's something to be aware of too. Can you see this angle? I don't know if that shows. Can you, um, right there, see that little angle? That's graphite because that's where I put my, um, my lines initially just to let me know where the mat was going to go. It will always show through lighter colors. So be very careful. If you draw things out first with a graphite pencil, it needs to be light because it will show through. These are, it's like they're thick, but they're still very translucent. It, many of the colors are. Some of the darker ones, you really don't see it, but in a light area, that is absolutely something to be aware of. So let's say, what method would I use to get my image on if it was something more detailed, like a portrait? I would probably use a projector and use one of the oil pastels to sketch it out if I wanted to trace it. Or of course you can freehand it, but you can't do a lot of erasing. The, that is definitely not, I'm not a huge fan of graphite, just regular graphite lines. Um, let's see, what other colors do we have? I haven't even played with everything this set has. I'm just kind of experimenting here. Let's see what color that is, that is too blue. Those are definitely more blue. Get a little bit more with the, nope, too purple. I don't like that one. I think I'd rather just go with the blue then if I was going to pull blue in. Okay, so let's mix that in. Now I am going to use for my shadows the same, the darker areas. I'm gonna go with the blue from the sky because that makes way more sense than pulling in a random purple. So I have to be careful when I blend this though, because it is going to get dark, like really dark. A few little areas, I'm gonna go over that with that gray. gives me a little bit more of a neutral dark there. I want to get this dark enough because when I come over it with the white, that's what makes such a difference. Oh, that is black. That was just going to give me gray. Let's go over that. That was, let's move you away because I don't think I need the black pencil or one again and that could get very messy. Okay, let's blend this out. I may not need OMS. Let's try with just the paper. This is just the dry uh, Viva paper towel. That is really giving me a nice effect. See how it just tints it? it well, it doesn't show that much for you guys on that camera. Unfortunately, let me show you what I'm talking about here. Let's see if we can get the lighting right. You can kind of see where it's just starting to tint that color. These colors, my camera is not liking tonight. I apologize for that. Some of, they're really, it looks so pretty in person and you can barely see that there. That just isn't, these colors are not looking the same. They look so much better in person. That's no fun. I'm just going in little circles here. Now, anywhere where I blend with that blue, I want to make sure I switch the paper towel. If I just start blending over the light pink, I'm going to end up with that dark blue all over. And this is giving me such a nice soft look between the pink, much more so than that bright purple was going to do. And 
and I'm leaving areas, see how it gets a little bit lighter? Get, you want that variation in here. And I'm gonna see in a moment if I can adjust the color because this looks like a weird light peach. It is not, it's a really pretty rich color. Now I've gone to a cleaner side of the paper towel so it can blend out the coral color or the pink matter light lake something or another. It's a name that's way too long. Okay, now I get to start the part where it starts to really look good. Am I using the 120 set? Yes, I am. Okay, now let's, I can do the stars and look how well the white shows up for stars. Just make sure that they are grouped and clustered together. Do not put random polka dots everywhere. You wanna make sure that they are grouped and some are bigger than others. Variation is such a big deal. So this is why when I paint, I prefer splattering it because you get more variation. It's too easy. You make a couple of dots and you're like, oh, that, it looks great. And then all of the dots end up looking the same. Actually, let me see if I can adjust the lighting on this a little bit. Um, nope, that's the wrong one. Easel. I don't know if I will be able to. No. Yeah, it's not really getting this. It's a little bit more. My blue's not quite that blue though. So it's like, it's not balancing how pink, the pinks are more purpley pink than this orange pink it's showing me, but then the blues, like the pink isn't even, no, none of these options are even coming close to showing what the pink really looks like. Wow, this looks bad on video. That is unfortunate. Let me see if that helps at all. Oh, that kind of helps. We'll definitely leave that there. Maybe now I can adjust, nope. No, that, yeah, wow, that looks so bad. Surprisingly so. Huh. Wait, does this help? Not really. Yeah, I have a feeling no one is going to bid on this because it looks so bad on video and I'm going to end up having to just list it as a separate auction once I can get a real photo of it because I can't believe the difference in what this looks like in person versus what it is coming up on video is just, none of that is even that close. Okay, we're just going to have to deal with that. I apologize. Yeah, they're really having a hard time with it. The, um, Angela said reds are tough with tech. Yeah, that is really like this is more soft, almost a blackish blue, very gray, much more gray. And then this is more pink and it's not at all picking up these colors right. So I'm going to go ahead. Oh, we were working on dots, stars. So some of these I'm just lighter and I can also blend these out. You don't have to leave them that harsh. So if you want to soften it, just little, little dabs, push them back. But it is just such a big deal that when you do stars, you get variation in clumps, like clusters of them, not clumps. So some are spread out, some are grouped together. Just 
mix off a few of these. Okay, now let's start pulling these whites in here. And I'm probably done with the LMS. I don't think I will need it for anything else. Now, the important thing is to let that pink show through. Don't try to cover it completely. I want to pull that over the moon as well. And see now because we did those darks, the light that we pull in really shows up nicely. Now watch that you don't just do one weird long worm thing in there. Break these up. Got a lot of white in here. And I'm pushing a bit harder with this. Pull some of these darker colors in now in between the white areas because I know I want it to be a lot darker. Right now everything's just a bit too light. more of that blue in there. We'll darken that up. And you just keep building and layering and building. And if I want to blend it out, I'm going to use the paper towel again. Actually, I could use that or the Q-tip will work well for the smaller areas. Yeah. Paper towel is easier. And I just roll it up so it's the size I want. Now you can use blending tools, the blending stumps that I use often for graphite. I've got some over here, these guys. But you, they're better for tiny um, sharp edges, these things. They're harder to get a soft look with. So where I want it to be softer, that's why I've switched, I'm using paper towels instead of something like those that are better for like sharp, clean edges. See how I'm blending the blue areas again first so I can get a clean edge where I want to work more with the pinks. I need a darker color in here. Let's see a little bit of red. Mm, that's not really layering that well. Maybe the purple would be better. Let's find out. Is that purple? Nope, not that one. I think I've used that. Yeah, this one's more of a lavender color. Cobalt violet light. I'm gonna pull a little bit of that violet color into the moon too. If I'm gonna pull into one area, I need to put it in a couple of other spots. just reforming my paper towel so that I can get a clean area. Oh, I can't say it out loud. Let me finish this. Or I will have hounds up here already. Now when I go to the white, I'm not going to blend that too much because I really want this to sand out. I just want to soften it a bit. I'm just lightly dragging across that. Okay, let's see. We've got, oh wait, let's see if the boys notice. We've got a super chat from Jen. Look at, the, she said the word, mom said the word. 
Do you, thank you, Jen, for the super chat. She said, thanks for your instruction. You're welcome. Were you aware that that means dogs get a treat? Thank you so much. Okay, boys, back up, back up, back up so they can see your cute face. Good boy. Thank you for the slobber, Gibson. Don't slobber on my cat. That is too close to you. That's it. Go lay down. 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 Wade. Down. Hey. Follow directions. Boys, all the way down. Gibson, down. So you may not know this. Sight hounds, greyhounds, all of the sight hounds really, extremely stubborn. Like, oh my gosh, when they decide they want to do something, they're just like, you can't make me. I can do what I want. So that's why Gibson's just like, I don't want to lay down right now. Um, very stubborn breed. Okay, so thank you again. Uh, <coughs> Thank you again, Jen. Okay, so let's build, so let's keep building these up. I'm definitely adding more pressure with the white now. Actually, I hadn't finished really blending some of that. Let's grab another bit of this. I have that nice little tint on the moon. And this is the look that I personally love, that roughness with the oil pastels, that kind of chunky look. So I don't want to over blend. I mean, you can smooth it out as much as you want, but personally, I like, really like that more rough feel to them. At least on these final layers. The initial layers, not so much. The initial layers I definitely like to be softer. Um, but when I get into these top layers with the white, I really want that texture to show. But the reason that it looks good is because I've already got so many layers underneath, it's almost going on smooth. Your first layer with the oil pastels, when you go on top with the paper going across the dry, it doesn't look as smooth as this. This, you get that more wet into wet blending look. Focusing on an area that I'm pretty sure is not going to show up on once it's matted. Because that's kind of a waste of time. And I think that's one of the things, at least for me, that I have to watch because I do like that slightly rough look. I want to stop. Don't, don't just keep blending. It's so easy to keep blending. Stop, look at it, and then come back and add more if you need to. And a lot of what I'm doing here too, I've got so much pigment on the paper already. Like as I'm adding the white, it's not gonna make it completely white. It's just going to lighten what's underneath. If I wanted to go to completely white, I need to lift some of that off. So scraping is the easiest way to, if you've got like a flat a razor blade would be too sharp. I wouldn't wanna scrape the paper, but like a card, something like this, just a piece of cardboard, I could scrape an area that I need to lighten up. If, I, if it's got too much pigment, scrape some of that and then put the white on. Now the white's gonna be brighter, it'll show up better. Oh, I love this. This, always, this is the stage that I always get excited with when working with them. I love this rough look that you get in here. It, that textured look. And I'm hitting the tops of these clouds, making them a lot brighter. Now an area like this that's going over the blue, I am going to soften that out so it's more in the distance. Just using that Q-tip. I think those of you outside of the U.S. call them cotton swabs. And 
same thing. I'm just going to soften some of this out, mostly the bottom edge. I want the upper edge of these details to stay harsh. And I'm just pulling that shadow down into the cloud. And this would be how I would work in any medium where I'll get that sharper edge on the top. And just when I blend it, blend it down, but leave that upper edge harsh. I'm just pulling that down. I'm just wadding this up to create a soft blending thing, blending thing, technical turn. Now let's see really quick. I'm curious because now I'm pulling this down. I'm not seeing as easily where the mat would fit on this. So let's take a look. How much of that gets blocked? Okay, so all of this down here really is not showing, which means I wanna pull some more pink into this one. Because that is still showing. And see what happens, I don't know, can you see in this? You can see bits of the previous layer showing through. I'm not trying to cover it. I want to make sure I get that variation of color. That's just why this is why we wanted to build that up the way we did. Let's actually let that set for a moment. I want to come up here and start adding some detail around the moon. Pull some of those lights in. Now you can do even more detail too with colored pencil. Depending on how thick you have that on will impact how well it sticks. Now this would be a good one to use the Q-tip to go ahead and soften some of those edges. I can actually take this guy. Do I have my? The joint drawing doesn't actually stick that well to these, but I can still use it to clean that edge up a bit. So this is just my regular wax-based colored pencil. And this is actually getting not shaped right. So let's go around that with a blue and then I'll be able to blend that out. Losing my shape there. Now I'm gonna pull this blue out into the sky, let that fade out. And then if I wanted to rest my hand on this, like I've always, I would just use a piece of glassine. If I need that extra stability, you could also use a mull stick. But if I rest my hand on that, I will end up with pigment all over my hands, which can get quite messy. We can take some of the blue and darken a few little bits in here. You don't want to go too crazy with it. And then I'm going to smudge that again. So you definitely do not always need OMS. I find it much easier for those beginning layers, but at this point, if I used it, I have enough pigment on here. I would need to be very, very careful not to overdo it. Gosh, that looks, the color is just so, let me see if I can adjust this again. That's very, and I apologize for messing with this continuously. It's just surprising to me how far off this is. It's kind of, not really. 
The blue is too blue. The everything is just a mess on this tonight. I'm just going to lightly soften some of this in the moon. And again, if I want sharper details, I can come through and scrape some of that off. Those are probably a bit too sharp there. It's a very forgiving medium and that like right there, I was like, ah, too sharp, just soften it back. Just go back over it, no big deal. Let me show you really quick what this is looking like. Let's see if it looks better here. That is so different than what you guys are seeing. So there we go. That is much closer. All of this again gets cut off by the mat. But yeah, it's very odd. I don't know if it's the medium as a whole. Cause, well, it must not be the medium because my cameras were okay with the, um, the other one, the lighter color one. It must just be the colors I chose on this piece. It is not liking it. see a lot of this is not it's just blending at this point on its own because there's so much pretty pigment on there so I don't even need to go over it with anything not even a q-tip this area I do need to soften though just over the sky there Just taking more of this pink color back over the, some of those darks. So I don't want to over blend. I'm just dabbing a little bit where I just want a teeny bit softer. I want to keep that roughness in there. These areas I will blend where I want it to be soft. We are just about done. Okay, and then again, when this has, actually, let's go over that a little bit brighter. Now that I've got the shape in there. Oh yeah, much better. This is white, white. It looks light blue to you right now. What I'm doing is completely like straight white. Can you tell I'm frustrated with the cameras not like not being able to capture this accurately? Cause it doesn't look, it looks so good in person, but not here, unfortunately. Just a bit. Don't want to over blend. Do you want to pull a little bit more blue back in a couple spots? Okay, and then again, the way that the Matt cuts this off. I should have taped it where the mat would cut it better so you could get a better idea. We'll be right about there. So that is what that one will look like. That it's so much prettier in person because that color is just not. Let me show you again this way. Let's 
So you can see the color in the blue and the moon. Like this is like completely white, white. This is a much more kind of blackish blue. And then of course the pinks are, the pinks are a little bit more vivid in person, but there you go. That is the finished project. So, and this medium is really fun to work in, just the way that it layers and blends and how you can build up this texture. Clouds are especially fun. I would say great for your first project if you've never worked in oil pastels before because they always look like clouds. Even if it's, you're just, you know, you're having, you're getting the, the feel of blending. It still looks like clouds. You're still, it's a good project um, versus worrying too much about detail or anything like that right now. Okay. Let me move some of this out of the way. Come on, move. Oh, I'm gonna knock that over if I try to move that too much. I'm trying to get this so it's easier for me to edit later. Let's see. One second while I get everything situated again. And I will put you guys, oh, actually I better lock that over here for now. Okay. So I will go through your questions in just a moment. One of the first things I wanted to talk about was when you're coming up with your artwork, quantity versus quality. You often hear me talk about spend more time in your work, put more effort into it. If you're not really happy with it, if it's not coming, you know, you're not getting the, the, the desired results, put more time. But there's time where you can take that too far. You can cross into an area of you're just not getting anything done because it's ne you're never spending enough time. It never feels perfect enough. So the advice I'm giving right now is really going to be more for those who are looking to be professional artists who are trying to make a living doing this. The, the, the reason that this idea or this concept, no, that's not even the right word, way to say that. What got me started on this is one of my friends is a musician. Phenomenal singer, songwriter, amazing. I used to play in a band with him. He's phenomenal, like so good. But he never really went anywhere with his career, even though he wanted to. Why is that? Why is it when you look at, why does one musician not go anywhere? Same thing with artists. And one just takes off and it kind of explodes. And then every, you know, they, they do really well for themselves. Whether your goal is financial success or more followers, whatever your goal is, and it's going to vary from, from person to person. There's no one set like this is the, the definition of success. But some artists, why do some just take off so much more? In this case, the the artist that I'm friends with, the musician that I'm, the musician that I'm friends with, he just released a new song and he was so excited to announce it. It's been years in the making, years, plural, lots of years. Um, this is way too bright. Let me, this is blinding me. Let me see if I can unblind myself. There we go. Um, but he has spent, whatever, he has spent years on one song. And he's amazing, the song will be good. And then he spent all this time marketing it. And he even said that in the, the thing, it's been years in the making to bring this song, singular, to you. When you're working on something, it should not, you can't be, there we go. You can't really be successful with art or with music. It, same thing with, in, in do, spend years on one project. You're not gonna get anywhere. He disappeared. I didn't even know he was still doing music. I had no idea. I've not seen anything with him with, that he's produced, well, apparently in years, because one song. We can't do that as artists. You're not going to be successful in doing that. Again, if you're a hobbyist, no worries. You, you spend all the time you want on something like that. What if you do have a, a project, a painting, that's just this huge, big thing, <coughs> big thing. You're gonna make prints, you're going to, whatever your plans are, but you knew it was gonna take years. You better be getting some small stuff done in between. You better be doing other things at the same time. You cannot put all your eggs in one basket of one project. It will never, ever work. With music, with art, one is not gonna make your career. One is not gonna pay your bills. How much money are you gonna make off one song? How much money are you gonna make off one painting, even if you're getting prints made of that painting? you're not going to pay your bills doing that. So if you're a professional artist and your goal is to make a living doing this, you have to balance how much time you spend in something. 
and, and there's not a definite answer, but a good example that I was personally really impressed with, there is a musician I've recently found, uh, started following, um, unlike Pluto, you can find him here on YouTube. Phenomenal. He singer, songwriter, he plays all the instruments in his music, he masters it, same as Christian. Christian can do all the stuff on his own. He'll sometimes bring in drummers or whatever, but Christian can do most of the stuff on his own. Um, he, he doesn't, um, my brain just shut off completely. Anyway, the, the Unlike Pluto guy decided a few years ago, his music was okay. I listened to some of his older, older stuff. It's like, yeah, I mean, it's good. It's not really my style, but cool, whatever. He decided to start producing one song, publishing one song every single week. Not only did his work just shoot through the roof skill-wise, he built a following because of that. That made such a difference in his growth because he was consistent. He was consistently producing stuff. And now the last CD, um, what is it? Uh, chair, what is it called? Hold on. This is the one that I'm obsessed with right now. Um, something nightmares, cherries, some cherry bloom. Cherry Blossom Nightmare is the album, the, one of the more recent ones that I am obsessed with. It is so good. We, you hear occasionally artists say, and there was actually an artist here on YouTube that used to say this, that when you started trying to do things um, on a schedule, so like we were, as YouTubers, we need to try to get at least one, one video made a week. If you aren't doing that, your, your growth, especially in the past, it's a little bit different now, but in the past, at the time that this YouTuber had commented on this, um, you really weren't going to go anywhere on YouTube. You had to continu continuously re produce. And her thing was that a warning to artists, don't fall into the YouTuber trap or whatever. Don't, don't force yourself to try to produce one thing a week, really. If I'm going to be a professional artist, I better be able to get one project done a week. It's unreasonable for me not to be able to get something done, even if it's a quick sketch to share while I'm working on a bigger project. And here's the thing, that artist, gone, disappeared. I hadn't seen anything from her in years. Apparently, pushing forward and pushing myself to get one thing done a week really, really helped. It, it made a difference in my art improved. I was able to build a following doing this. That matters. Being consistent matters. It is better to produce something than to produce nothing. And I think that is something where we have to find that balance of how, do, how much time do I need to spend to make it good without pushing myself to the point where I just spent three years on one project. That isn't going to take you anywhere. So it, it was just an interesting kind of study of these two musicians, and I see this with art as well. You've got to, like my friend, he's just such a perfectionist. And the things that he's changing, and it's taking years and years and years for him to work on, no one's going to notice the difference. I guarantee you, had he produced this song in the first week, let's give him two weeks, very few people would notice that big of a difference between what he produced then and what he just is now releasing. You can't build up excitement on one project. And it's the same thing with music. I mean, I'm not all excited to listen to his one song because I don't have a full CD. I want to listen to a full CD. If I want to listen to that sp a specific artist style, I want to do a lot. With art, you've got to be producing a lot to keep people's attention. If, you're produ if you do one amazing painting once a year, once every six months, whatever, people forget about you. You, not to mention that the algorithms also start forgetting about you, so that's a whole other thing. But even when, back when, let's say Facebook, when they actually used to share your content with people, if you only produce once a month, once every three months, once every whatever, people forget about you and they start doing this, well, why was I following this person? What, what is this art? I don't remember this because they don't remember who, you weren't posting often enough for them to remember you. That is a big deal. And then you have on the flip side with artists. Here's another story, an artist that I saw on Reddit, Reddit recently. She made a post of a, she was doing plus sized pinup drawings and not my thing, but I can certainly see where that would be interesting. Like that could do well. I could see people that could do well. Her problem was she posted complaining, I've been doing these every week for a year and they've not taken off yet. What am I doing wrong? I was curious. I looked at her work. Yeah, she, they're half-baked projects. She's not finishing them. So, you know, you've got the other side too. I'm not saying rush through to get just something done. She's putting in, her project probably took 15 minutes, but she wants that, that 60 hour payout. She shouldn't, if you're doing quick sketches, one, that should be done every day, not once a week, but she's scribbling the shading. She's not really shading things. She could use, color it with markers or whatever. She could fill it in. She could do so much more to make it better. And she's doing these 
half baked projects that don't look like I see potential, but she's lazy. She's a la she's being a lazy artist is what the problem is. And you but you have to find that balance. Are you being lazy and just trying to rush through something really quick just to get it up? Or are you over you you do are you going too far with being such a perfectionist that you're not getting anything completed? It is very important if you're trying to be, be a professional artist, find that balance. Your work is never going to be perfect. Don't spend three years perfecting something that would have been fine in the first month or so, week, month, whatever, that you can really take the perfectionism too far where you will never succeed because you're never producing anything. But also that doesn't mean make half-baked projects and expect to go anywhere with those either. You've got to find that balance. And I think giving yourself a goal is a huge, huge benefit to you. For me, I try to get one thing done a week. You guys know like my oranges took a month. One of those weeks didn't count because I was sick. But they take took extra long. But I try to get at least one project done a week. It's, that is doable. It may be a small project while I'm working on another big project. That is doable. The artist, unlike Pluto, phenomenal, phenomenal musician. And he got better because he was doing it. I mean, he was already good to start with. But when he started doing one a week, his skill just, he, he developed his style more. Everything just got so much better because he was just got to get something else done. Now got to get on to the next project. I don't have time to fuss over this one, to spend a, a month or a year, <laughs> several years, um, getting one song perfected. I've got to get on the next thing. His work is better because of it. That is such a benefit, but put in the work. That doesn't mean, oh, I'm going to spend 15 minutes and get, so I have something to show you this week. You've still got to work your butt off to get that work done. That is important. So my point here, find a balance in all of this because people have a tendency to go to too far of extremes of being a perfectionist and not producing anything or half baking projects, not really finishing them, calling them done and being frustrated that no one's excited about it. Okay. So we've got your questions. Let's go through these. Um, oops. Let's see. Maria said, hey, Lisa, I believe that Sennelier, I can't say it, makes jumbo oil pastels, at least in certain colors that you can buy for colors that you use a lot. I saw that. I'm definitely going to have to pick up white because that one I am going to, I got several smaller ones, but yeah, that's good tip. Barb said, whoops. Barb said, are you able to get really fine details with these, for example, if you're doing animal portraits? So yes, you can. There's different techniques you can use, like the scraping off I was showing on the moon at one point. Actually, we can come back over here and let's, I could get in finer details by scraping. Can you see where, oh, kinda, it's so tiny. I'm, that's what I just scraped right there, that little Y shape. You can get little details if you pay attention to what you, I can soften that out because I don't really want it that harsh, but you can get little details like that by scraping things out. Another method that you can do, which works, whoops, did not do what I needed it. There we go. Another method that you can do is colored pencils. Wax-based colored pencils generally stick better if you're using a harder oil-based pencil, you're more scraping the, the pigment off. But you can take, like I had used my, this one is actually too soft, I don't like the Derwent drawing for this, but the Caradosh Luminance are gonna work better. You can use that and put in fine detail. So if I'm doing a portrait, I'm gonna be using a lot of colored, I shouldn't say a lot, I'm gonna use some colored pencil to clean up edges. Now, I my goal with oil pastels, I'm not looking to create work that is as detailed and refined as colored pencil. I want that more painterly, that looser style. That's my goal when I work with oil pastels. So yeah, you can get detail and there's methods you can do, but I don't, for me, I definitely prefer a somewhat more looser, well, the more loose painterly style. Um, you can also use stencils. So I could rip out an, a piece of paper in the shape I want and get a crisp edge that way. But that all I feel like you're putting, it, depending on how much of that detail you're trying to get, let's say you're trying to get every line in pet fur and dog fur. I'm gonna put down my, my base color, I'm gonna put a color on top, and I'm gonna come back through to get the details by scraping up and exposing that color underneath. So it's almost like you're doing a scratch board type art to get some of that detail, but it works very, very well with this medium because you, you do layer it so thick, thick. You just have to plan that first because you need to know what color you're gonna expose when you, you scrape it off, or colored pencils. Okay. Um. 
Karen said, if someone bids, can you send them a photo by text? I don't know how to do, actually, you know what? Hold on. Let me see if I can get a decent photo of this. Oh, that looks too coral. It's not even accurate on its own. Maybe I can get something kind of close and send it to myself. Actually, let me do it with the, the mat. Hold on, we're gonna get creative for a second here because we've got time. Because this one is so inaccurate, I would kind of feel bad if someone bids on it and it's not what you thought it looked like. Let me see if I can get this, send it to myself, and this is the most, talk about half-baked ideas. You should see what I'm doing over here. Okay, let's get a photo of this. And I'm gonna send it to myself and bring, bring it into OBS. This is too bright, let's tone that down. Now I have to edit it, so you're gonna have to give me just a moment here. Um, let's see. That is pretty close. I have to desaturate it so much to get the color. The pink isn't quite the same. Let's undo that. This is not the best way to edit this, but I think it's the best I'm gonna be able to get. Um, I'm gonna try. Oops, I promise I'll answer questions in just a moment. Um, tools, I'm using, if you don't have this, by the way, Snapseed, it's a free app. You can use it for Android or uh, I've, Apple products, and it is amazing. For, here we go, this is what I need, saturation. Nope. Undo, undo. And I'm able to sit here and it's kind of close. Okay, let me crop this and I'm gonna pull it into or send it to myself. It's not exact because, you know, my phone, but um, it's gonna give you a better idea. Kinda. Uh, let's go ahead and save that and send it to myself really quick. Attach file. Okay, and let me pull this up on here. Um, hopefully it sounds quick. Good, it did. Ah, oh, that's not even accurate either. It may be my computer monitor. I desaturated that way too much. Hold on. So I do wonder how much of this is my computer versus that's close-ish. Um, pull down shadows. Oh, there we go. That actually is a lot closer. It's all taped. I'm so bad um, the way I've got this to make the mat stay put. Okay, let's try sending that to myself. See if that worked better.
and it may just simply be my computer monitor. Yeah, it's still more set. Okay, good enough though. We're going to go with it. And let's pull this up. We're going to add an image. This is close-ish. It looks better on my phone. On my phone, it's called, uh, <coughs> excuse me, it's called Snapseed. And it is amazing. That's not it. That is it. Um, but you can edit so much with that. So it's definitely kind of a must-have app. So that is closer depending on your computer monitor. Um, on mine is almost desaturating the pink a little bit, but it's a much closer look to what it will be. And then I will sign right here. I just haven't done that yet. So that is more what it is looking like if that helps. Okay. Questions. I'll pull that up a couple of times to share. Um, Come on, questions. Where did you go? Um, that was it. I'm glad you asked that though, because I think it's th that is more helpful than what as long as that just took. Um, that is better than what the camera's giving me. Okay. Francisco said, Hi Lisa, I've heard that it is recommended to wear gloves with oil pastel. Is it a myth? No, actually, if you're gonna be using, like I don't have it on my hands because I'm not touching it, I'm touching the outside edge. But if you're going to be smudging with your fingers, yeah, gloves is definitely a good idea because some of the pigments, now I don't know, I have not checked with this brand, but I know some pigments and some brands, they're still using like zinc and different pigments that you wouldn't want. So like if you had to cut on your hand, that might be problematic. So yes, if you're going to be making being very messy, absolutely. In my case, I'm touching mainly other materials to blend. But if I were going to be doing a lot of blending with my fingers, I would definitely be wearing gloves. Um, and there should be toxicity information because it's required by law to, in order to sell here in the US anyway. So <clears throat> if you go to Blick's website, I think each color should have its toxicity information. They may on their, the website of the company itself, but I think Blake had that information available. Um, let's see. Barb said, do you ever do soft pastels or only the pan pastels with color pencil? Only the pan pastels, soft pastels are too dry and chalky. They like weird me out. And it's funny because I used to use them so much when I was younger. As I've gotten older, this weird, like the dryness, I cannot handle. Like it's a weird, it freaks me out. I have issues. Um, Angela said, so how long does it take for an oil pastel work to dry and does it need to be varnished? So mine that I use, it may depend on the brand, but at least in my experience years ago, they never really dried, but I never used a varnish. So, or a fixative. So this one, the fixative that it came or that's by that brand, this is so, like, it hardened it so much. I couldn't believe the difference. Now I'm not going to, I don't know if it'll work for every brand of, of oil pastel. I would definitely do a small sample because sometimes I know with colored pencils, some fixatives don't play with nicely with certain brands of pencil. So <coughs> people have posted photos of things going horribly wrong. So I I've tested now with this one, um, the one that I did, the small one, and you can see like I'm touching it, nothing's coming up on my fingers. So th this fixative is amazing for these pastels, but again, I've not tried them on anything else, so I don't know. Um, if I w wasn't going to use a fixative, I would get it framed behind glass as soon as possible so that it doesn't get damaged. I mean, anytime any of this should be framed behind glass, but I, I would be more concerned if it didn't have that fixative on it. Okay. Um, Tasha said, would you say layering with pastels is more like layering with acrylic or more like layering with watercolor or perhaps more like colored pencil? I'd say more like oil pa paintings. I think if you were working wet into wet <coughs> because the previous layer is not really dry. So, I mean, as I'm layering blue on top of more blue and then I put white on top of all of that, the previous layers of blue are mixing in with that white. So it's, I would say it's closest to oil painting the way that you layer what would essentially be wet into wet. Suhel said, will you review this set? Yes, definitely. And why did you pick this brand? Because it has the best reviews. It's, it's supposed to be the best. I mean, every when I looked up when I wanted to do oil pastels, everyone was saying these were the best. So 
that's why I went ahead and went with these. I've used student brand again years ago. The difference between them, oh my gosh, night and day difference. Like it is crazy. These are so buttery. They're very soft, whereas the, the student grade were a harder, I had to do a little bit more work, um, but I still got good results. So I don't want to where I normally discourage people from student grade materials because they don't work the same. Honestly, when I used student grade oil pastels, I enjoyed them. The only, my main complaint was that they were never, they'd never dry. And so it was kind of a pain to have this painting or this drawing on paper. And it's like, what do I do with this? If I don't want to frame it, cause I store all my stuff stacked up. Like, where do I put this? Cause it's just not really, it's just kind of messy and gooey. That fix it have just solved all my problems. But anyway, um, that is why I went with these because they do seem to have from everything I looked into, they had the highest reviews. Um, and they, the company anyway says they're all light fast. Uh, let's see. Tasha said, what would the, what would the technique be for using oil pastels with chalk pastel? I wouldn't use them together. Is it even possible? I don't know. I'm not going to say it's not possible because lots of things are possible. I, you would have to put the chalk down first. Chalk, not really going to stick on top of the oil pastels, but I don't know why you would. Like, I can't see, I can't think of a time where that would be beneficial as a mixed medium. Like some mixed medias make sense. Like watercolor first and then color pencil on top makes sense. You save so much time, you get great results. But in this case, I don't see where it makes sense to do one over the other. And then you run into the problem of which fixative to use. This fixative is specifically for oil pastels. So that would not be a, I wouldn't mix that myself with soft pastels. As far as, is it even possible? I don't know. I don't know why, like I, I just don't see a benefit. Do they have light fast ratings? They do. And these ones were all, they, so this, I contacted the company about this and I haven't heard back, but it probably went to my spam folder like everything else. So I'm going to contact them through social media, but I asked them, what do those stars mean? I couldn't find any information on that. They used like a three star rating and these all have high ratings. They're all, I think two and three, one and two, I don't know, two highest ones, but I don't know what that means as far as blue wool or ASTM and I've not heard back from the company and then I jumped I like was just too excited I was gonna wait until I heard back but I got excited I was like ah screw it I'm just gonna order it but um like I said they've got the best reviews of all of them but I don't know what those three stars mean as far as blue wool or ASTM so I'm gonna have to find that out probably contact them it looks like they're pretty active on Facebook so I'll probably contact them that way if they did email me and I was checking my spam, I was being good about it for the first few days and then I forgot. And so it could have just gotten completely lost in there. I'm not sure. Or maybe they just didn't respond. I am not sure. Can we use zest it for oil pastels? Um, I would assume so. I never have, but it should work fine. Um, Art of Raven D said, I enjoy almost every student brand of oil pastel I've used, except for the oil pastels of my brother's kid set when he was three. And Artist Loft was terrible student grade choice too. Oh, good to know. Um, Artist Loft, isn't that one is Michael's house brand, I believe. Um, yeah, good to know. Yeah, the oil pastels I've used before, like I never really had any complaints. I enjoyed them. And I can't say that with other paints. I can't say that like watercolor, huge difference. I did not like watercolor because I was using student grade initially and they do not work the same. I didn't like, and even though I'm saying these don't work the same, I still liked the results I got with student grade. So, which was, that's the only medium I can really think of that I would say that with. I don't like student grade colored pencils for the most part. A few of them will work okay, like a few colors within a set, but overall I don't like them. I don't like um, oils, or like a lot of those I'm just not a fan of, but yeah, these, I liked them fine, um, at least the ones I had used. Um, let's see. So I'm glad to see Art of Raven D. I'm really glad that you felt the same and that it's not just in my head because I haven't used them in so, so many years. I mean, we're talking for my own work, the, my, the last time I probably made, besides the clouds I did the other day, the last time I probably did something like that, I'd say 95, 96, 97, right around there. Um, I've worked with students in the meantime and since then on their projects, how to layer, how to, you know, get different effects. But like, as far as working on it myself, my own for it's been a very long time. So I'm glad to hear that you two liked the other brands and that it's not just me having a bad memory. 
Um, Ellen said, is it necessary to use oil pastel paper or can I just use medium to rough watercolor or other papers instead? So I would not use medium to rough, I would go with a smoother surface. So if I was going to use watercolor paper, I would use like the Arches Hot Press 140 pound watercolor paper. You want something rough for sure. You also, smooth, I like better. I don't, you could go with rough, but you're gonna get a really bumpy end result. So I guess it depends on what your goals are. Um, you could get kind of cool results with that, but most of the time, most people are gonna go with a smoother surface, so a hot press watercolor paper is better than your rough. It's just that I want a thicker cardstock because it's gotta be able to handle me sliding and moving it around and pushing kind of hard and um, not hopefully bending and moving because, you know, I don't wanna keep putting it, putting it back in place with my hands and making a whole mess, but um, you, it also, I want it to be able to handle OMS, so. I, I don't want something super thin. Now, something that would be kind of similar to this paper, I have a mixed media paper that's something cheap. I don't even know where I got it, but actually probably came with, no? No, I think I did buy that one maybe back when you could get different papers at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Doesn't matter, I don't know why I'm rambling about that. Point is, it was something that was mixed media that was cheaper and it was very similar to this, not exact, but close enough that I would be comfortable working on it. I just want that heavier weight and not rough. Um, let's see. Dolphin Soul said, question from last week. Do you find ink tents does not dry as well on canvas? I have never tried it on canvas. Um, so I'm not sure there. I've used a hair dryer. Everything feels dry. Add the next layer and colors keep blending and reactivating. Oh yeah, I don't know. I've never, I've only used it on watercolor paper. So I can't answer that. Um, let's see, Tasha said, is pastel over acrylic considered archival? Yeah, you could, call, I would call that archival because you're putting the water-based product down first and then the oil pastels on top of that. So, and you said oil pastels, right? You said pastel. So normal pastels, I, I don't know. I don't use regular pastels. I'm not sure why you would do that. But I could see doing a base layer with oil pastels where you did like a wash on paper. So you thin it down with a lot of water with acrylics and then go on top with oil pastels. You definitely could do that because you're putting the oil-based product on top of the wax or on top of the um, water-based acrylics. Now I would not do the reverse because then you're putting a water-based product on top of oil-based. So you couldn't do the reverse. So it would be acrylic first, then oil pastel on top would be fine. Um, Any tips on how, from Francisco? Hi, any tips on how to keep your oil pastel clean? When I layer them, they get very dirty. So it just takes planning and, and te maybe test on a scratch piece of paper because some colors as you layer, like as we work through, oh my camera's not even over here. As we work through this one, I have to know that the colors I put in here aren't going to create mud as I layer them. Like I don't want to use black to do the shadow. I would, well, in this case I would get gray and that would, be okay for this piece. But I normally, let's say I had yellows in here. I don't wanna use black near it because that is going to smudge and create a muddy mess. Those colors, if I'm working in oil pastels, I have to be so careful not to smudge those into each other because black and yellow mixing together is not cute. Same thing with oranges. I don't like black with oranges mixing in. But like here, any of these colors can kind of smudge and you'll be okay. So it depends on what you're you're doing. But yeah, you have to, you have to be aware of things like that. Like I know I don't want black smudging in with my yellows or oranges. So that needs to stay away from those. You, you have to plan for sure. It's not one, this isn't a medium like with color, with acrylics, for example, I can decide I'm going to do some spacing and like, okay, I'm going to paint the background. And then let's say for this one, I'm going to paint the background. And then I want an orca swimming through here. I am not gonna do it in that way with oil pastels. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pre-draw out the orca and work around it. Because if I try to layer the blacks and get the blues and everything over this, I'm gonna, these are gonna start smudging a lot. Now, one thing that you can do is take something that is a bit harder, like here's kind of a, a cardboard piece or a, it was a tag off something. It's thicker than, it's thicker than normal paper. I could scrape an area off lift some of that color and then lay new color down over it if I was starting to create a horrible muddy mess. But this is essentially like working 
wet into wet with oil paints where the layers aren't drying in between. So you've got to plan <coughs> what is able to mix with another, or do you need to stop and scrape? You could use a palette knife to scrape things off. That would actually, that makes more sense. Um, but you can use a, and I would use a metal one, not a plastic one. I don't like how rounded the plastic ones are for this, but a palette knife and scrape an area off and rework it. But there definitely needs to be a decent amount of planning going in before you ever start the project. Otherwise, things start, you're going to get mud. If you were like, I randomly changed my mind and now I want a bird flying through here. Well, if you didn't plan for that, you're trying to fill a bird in. Part of it's over like this, the area in the background here. This is not on real heavy, so the bird's going to show up better. This is on thick and heavy. I don't even want to touch it because it would come off of my finger right now before I varnish it. Um, but... Oh, well, actually, I have to touch right there because it's had a big chunk on it. But anyway, um, you got a chunk there too. But <coughs> if I was trying to do a bird, let's say a sparrow or something, and his wing is over here, it's not going to look the same on this side. I need to plan that out beforehand. I would have needed to draw the sparrow out separately before jumping in to layer on top of layer on top of layer. You are limited with this on how you're going to layer because those previous layers are still wet and they're going to reactivate. So scraping off an area can work. But you need, you definitely, it's better to plan out a lot when you're working with oil pastels. Um, and then as far as the, in case this is what you meant, the oil pastel themselves, if you mean the actual stick, I think some of mine are dirty. Let's see. Like, see this one? I don't know if you can see. It's got, oh, it's shiny because it's hard to tell. It's got pink on it. All I would do is take paper towel and wipe that off. And now it's clean. So as far as the stick itself to clean, just wipe it off on my paper towel. Then the artwork's a much more complicated process. Nancy said, Ampersand makes pastel panels, which are great for oil pastels. Oh, interesting. I have, oh no, not that. I have <coughs> pastel mat. I've not used that with. Um, that's good to know. I need to check that out. Ultramarine Blue said, I know that sen sen Senelier. I have to like stop and think of how they said to pronounce it. Um, oil pastels are light fast. Three star means fully star means fully light fast. They also tell pigments use, so you can tell light fast by pigments pigments alone. That's interesting. I see. I always want to know though. How does that compare on the blue wool scale? Because when a company tells me that something is light fast, that is a subjective term. I want to know exactly on blue wool. It's a number one, two, three, whatever. I want to know, okay, this color is going to fade in within 25 years. This one can last 50 or more. Like when you say it's light fast, I could say something that is light fast for two years is light fast because it's light fast for two years. Like that, but that's not the information I'm looking for. So I really like to know from companies how it compares to blue wool or ASTM. Those are the two that we know like at this rating, it's going to last for this amount of time. And that makes it easier for me to judge. So I definitely would like some more information um, from them on that. But I mean, oil pastels don't have, I've not read any real issues with people having problems with them fading, like colored pencils, watercolor, especially. Some mediums are just notorious for colors just fade fast. And I don't hear that a lot with oil pastels, but maybe not as many people use oil pastels, so I'm not, I'm not sure why that is. That is just like, um, the word is slipping me. Slipping me? God, all the words are slipping me, um, including grammar. Let's see, Nikita said, I've been a huge, or hi from New Zealand. I've been a huge fan of yours for ages. Yay, I have learned so much from you. Thank you for making and sharing your knowledge to help other artists. Oh, thank you. I was... No one jumped up. Wade's eyes are open. I was afraid using the happy voice that he was going to jump, but I don't think he did. <coughs> Does fixative help preserve light fastness? So it depends on the fixative. Some of them do. Some of them are actually for like UV protecting, like um, dolphin soles, dolphin tail I need to do. I'm going to put a UV spray over it just to protect it as much as possible. This doesn't say anything about that. So I have no, like it's not specific for that, but it looks like these are Light fast. So ideally, use light fast products when possible and then put it behind UV protecting glass. Those are like your, your two best ways to go. But there are UV protecting sprays you can get. Not all fixatives are going to fit that bill. Um, just going through. Just uh, got that one. I wonder what the oldest oil pastel painting is now in existence. I don't even know when, do you guys know when did oil, I don't even know when oil pastels were invented. I've not really looked into them. I, I wasn't super like, I wasn't, 
planning on getting into oil pastels again because I never liked how they never they didn't dry all the way. Like that just always kind of bugged me. Well, I solved that problem. And after doing my other class, like the, I was just hooked as soon as I did the first project. I was like, yeah, that's it. I'm hooked. I love this right here, this roughness. If you can see that. That is like so enjoyable to create. It looks so good. I'm just such a huge, huge fan of um, that look. And I really want to get that rough look for oil pastels. There's an artist here on YouTube. I forget his name. Oh my gosh, his portraits. He did one of, oh, I can never remember his name. The guy, the Sherlock Holmes guy, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, Cumberbatch, something like that. It's so good. And it's this sketch. You can look it up here on YouTube later. It is so like his, the way that he does his oil pastel portraits are just like, that is what, I, that is, I, I want to try that. So I've never done a portrait in oil pastel, so that'll be a, a challenge, but I like that more sketchy look. Audrey said, what brand of pastel pencils would you recommend? Um, normal pastels, dry pastels, I don't use them, so I can't say at all, but I, I would say talk to Jason Morgan. He teaches in oil pastels. Uh, oil painting and oil pastels are his two main mediums that he teaches in, so he would be the expert there. Um, let's see, Maria said, I know Picasso and Senlier, Senlier, yeah, what, I can never say it, oil pastels. Okay, those are the two brands you use. I was gonna say, I know oh, Picasso used oil pastels. I really don't know how old this medium is. Um, oh, I didn't read that right again. I know Picasso used Sennelier oil pastels, so we know at least that old. Okay. Francisco said, I've heard that Picasso developed oil pastels with Sennelier. Sennelier. I can't say it. Dolphin Soul said, Saint, uh, Lisa saying Dolphin Soul's tail just made my night. <laughs> um, it's sitting over here. It's just so pretty. It's been on my table all week. I just... It, I'm liking that. I'm going to be sad to see it go. Uh, Linda said, that's awesome. I did not know that about Picasso. Yeah, neither did I. I. I did not know when the medium was done. I think for that looser, more impressionistic style, like if you are trying to loosen up your painting style, but you tend to put too much detail, this is going to limit how much detail, like you can get some detail, but you are limited. I think it's going to force you into getting that more painterly look. So it, it's kind of, it's really fun if you like that look. Uh, let's see. Art of Raven D said, I heard it was Sakura who made the oil pastels first, later Sennelier, yay, what, however I'm saying it, um, made a better one. But don't quote me. Well, I just did. Uh, too late. You should have started with that. Lead with the don't quote me. Uh, so Hell said, doesn't Jason Morgan work with the soft ones and say, yeah, he uses soft pastels. So he would be to go with that. Um, oil pastels, I have been out of oil, the oil pastel game for so long. Is that a thing, oil pastel game? I don't think so. I think only nerds say that. Um, I've used student grade in the past. I don't even know. Actually, let me see really quick. Oh, knocked my tea over. And spilling tea. Where's paper towel? I guess, oh, here, use this to, do you want ants? Because that's how you get ants. Hold on, let me see if I've got the other brands that I've used. If I do, they'd be in this drawer. Um, we can do a little testing if I've got them. I've got, I've got all kinds of stuff in here. So this is one of the things, the Smart Art Box, I think they're called the Muse Box now. One of the things that's so cool, I have so many supplies to play with that I probably would, oh my gosh, I'm just knocking stuff over. There went my fabric castell pencils. Okay, you are just making a mess over here, pencils. You need to go, you're taking a time out in the cabinet. Time out for you. Enough of your crap. Okay. Um, trying to see if I've got any oil pastels in here from... I've got an itchy eye. That doesn't help. No one needs to know that. These... I don't love tins of... I will show you in a moment what I do not love. Any tins like this. I'll bring this over and show you what I don't love. Um, I'm not seeing any oil pastels in here, so I might have some. Oh, how funny. I actually have, I didn't know I had these. These are from Smart Art Box. It's not what I was looking for. But I have some pa soft pastels from them. These boxes, these trays where you keep um, pencils, I hate them. Not every single company, there's no single company that like, and I, I mean, I guess it's a nice way for them to display their product. I don't know how else they would sell it. Get some sort of a pencil holder for your stuff. These never stay closed all the way. I can't tell you how many times I had students leaving my class and the tin snapped open 
and that whether it be pencils or paint, just everything just all over the floor. Get an actual, that's close, kind of okay. Um, get an actual container to hold yours in. It's a lot safer than, I have so many with like my ink tins, with all of that. I love the tins, I always keep them, but for they're, they're very impractical, especially if you're taking them somewhere, the lid always pops off of those. I have found these. So I do have some Sinley, Sinley, some soft pastels. Hmm. So I guess I have a few products from them now. These ones uh, were the Smart Art Box. So again, the Muse boxes, I think, I think it's still smartartbox.com. Those are fun because they send you new supplies every month. And I've got some, I need to do some of these projects, but they send you new supplies so you can try things and find out if you like them or not. And I'm glad that they sent me those, the soft pastels, because I started thinking, oh, maybe I'm not weird about them anymore. Maybe I can get through it. Maybe I can draw with them because I used to love them. That was an easy way for me to find out. Nope, absolutely not. I am too weird. Um, let's see. Also, make sure if you were not already, subscribe. Next week, we are going to be talking about ideas that you can make money from with your art. So ideas for, ideas for making money with your art. There's a lot of them. So we'll be going over that next week. Um, let's see. Uh, Sahail, Sahail, I apologize. I have a feeling I'm butchering your name. Said, does blue wool or ASTM apply to all mediums or do they have a separate standard for each medium? It applies to everything. So ASTM, um, blue wool, either one I'm okay with, but they're, it's a universal thing. They use it for like, how long is the color on that fabric going to last? Like everything, it counts for everything. So yeah, it just lets you know how long it will be, ta it will take for a color to fade when exposed to light. So and any artwork, I do not recommend exposing to direct sunlight. Make sure, I mean, it's okay if it's in a bright room, but I don't want it, um, my thing is trying to hide. I don't want it you know, where light is directly hitting it. Even if they're all light fast, that's, the light fast ratings are under museum standard qual museum standard lighting, something like that. Basically artificial lighting, not sunlight. Yes, if you're going to be in the Dallas, Texas area on May 20th or 21st, you can stop in if you can get tickets over at aquashella.com. I will be at Aquashella in Dallas with the booth. I will have many G clays available um, with marine life. I'm tired, can you tell? I feel like it's been a really long day, but I, don't, I haven't done anything today. I have no excuse for this, none. Um, I wish I had an excuse, but anyway, um, I will be at Aquashella, da Dallas, May 21st, 20th and 21st. I will have G. Clays with me. If you want to come and chat, I will be bored and standing there while people walk by my booth. So that'll be fun. But it's, a, it's an aquarium festival, so you've got fresh water, salt water. There are some reptiles there, and it's just lots of fun. And artists. Francisco said, Sinili, Sinili or whatever. I can't say it. Watercolors are my favorite. I didn't even know they made watercolor. Yeah, use tape on my tins. Doesn't even have to be archival. <laughs> Smart. Uh, do you still have your little clownfish? I have two little clownfish. I have um, uh, Picasso. She's a percula. And then I've got my Ocellaris, which is my black storm. He's the little cow print derp. And all the cow prints tend to be derps in my house. Um, but he's the inbreeding to achieve that color of clownfish. <laughs> he, he's... He's, he's a special one, but he's so cute. I've had him, I've had both of them for over four years now. So they're, they can live like 25, 30 years. So hopefully things will keep going well because he's adorable. Uh, he likes to lay, lay in one of my cor corals and he, just, he doesn't do like a normal clownfish where they wiggle around in it. He just like, I'm gonna lay here so you think I died. Just kidding, I'm alive. He does that to me all the time. Um, but yes, I still have them. I need to get some video of them. Um, let's see, do I use zested? I never have because I know it has an orange scent, although I'm hearing that they have a scent, one that isn't scented, and I hate strong orange scent. Like, it, it, not for me. Um, Dolphin Soul said, wish you'd come closer, or uh, live closer and come to Shark Con in Tampa, Florida. I was invited. I can go to the Dallas or the Florida Aquashellas, but it's travel with all my animals is not easy. Like, and it takes so much, it takes me weeks to feel normal after traveling. That, that is one thing with the fibromyalgia that travel takes everything out of me. So it's not even fun. Like even going to California to visit parents, 
or visit parents, to visit my parents, um, not visiting random parents, but to visit my parents. See, my brain gone today. But when I go to California to visit my parents, it's I'm just dead the whole time. I'm so tired the entire trip. It's not enjoyable for anyone involved. No one wants to deal with me when I'm that tired. So yeah, I don't unfortunately travel much. Uh, Rob said, how's Matt doing with the new gig? It, well, very good. It looks like he's going to be able to, like he's going to, I don't know how much I'm allowed to say. I will message you later, Rob. Um, it, it's going very well though. I'll, I'll say that, but I'll, I'll, I'll send you a message over on MeWe with more cool details. Um, let's see. Linda said, fibromyalgia, I'm so sorry, thank you. Um, but no, I'm, I'm not bad, it, the, the arthritis has been worse lately, but I have ankylosing, ankylosing spondylitis and arthritis, so I'm never sure like which one is making me so tired all the time, that's my main complaint most of the time. Um, but as long as I eat healthy, which I've not been doing lately, um, but if I do eat healthy, the symptoms are really not bad at all, I can control it with diet, so that's cool. Um, not as bad as it sounds. So yeah, that is okay. We are at 10.05. We are done. Thank you guys so, <coughs> excuse me. Thank you guys so much for joining tonight. Sorry that the color was not super accurate throughout this. I'll be posting photos tomorrow with a more accurate photo. Um, check out our moderators channels. Links are in the video description. They've all got art channels here. And I don't know what we're doing next. I should have asked you earlier. Message me on MeWe or, Inst or like, I don't know because this is about to end, so I'm not even gonna see comments. You can just comment on the video when it's over. Let me know what you wanna see next week. What medium, what subject matter, what are you looking for? So thank you guys so much for joining and I will see you next Wednesday.